Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. This is the second lesson for factoring polynomials. If you've not watched or listened to the first lesson, you really should go back and do that. In this lesson, we are going to factor the trinomial 4x squared minus 4x minus 15. Now this is a trinomial. It has three terms. It's a special trinomial also because it has an x squared term, an x term, and then a term that's just a number. And these trinomials that I have created will all factor into two binomials. In order to find the two binomials that this trinomial came from, I've created a box that really helps with finding those two binomials again. So go ahead and copy or draw your box again as you see here. Now the F stands for first. Our first term is the 4x squared. 4x squared can be obtained by multiplying 4x times x or it can be found by multiplying 2x times 2x. Now since we have two choices for this, rather than just use one box, we're going to use two boxes. Now it's up to you which one of these you want to start with. You can begin with a 4x times x, or you can begin with a 2x times 2x. I'm going to work with a 4x times x. Now, so underneath the f in my box, I'll write 4x times x. The first term is going to be uh, found by multiplying 4x times x, which is 4x squared. Now, the other letter at the top of this box is L. That stands for last. We will look at the last term, the negative 15. Yes, I did jump the middle term. We do not use the middle term until the end of the process. Right now, we would need to find the last term. Uh, what will multiply to give a negative 15? Well, that's pretty easy. A negative 1 times a 15 or a positive 1 times a negative 15 will give me the negative 15, our last term. Now notice that there's a, L, there's a little blank. The little blank is for our signs. In order to get a negative 15, we have to multiply with one negative and one positive. So I'm going to write that there to help us remember. Now there are other numbers though that will multiply to get 15. We know that 3 times a negative 15, oh excuse me, 5. and then a negative 3 times a positive 5. Now, we have four choices here. We have four choices for the last term. Now, um, if you've hopefully studied the first lesson, you know that the next two multiplies are found by going across the box. Because I know that I've got to come across with that 4 down to this area here, I am not going to put the 15 there. 4 times 15 is a very large number. I don't believe that's the way we want to go. I'm going to try the 15 up here and the 1 in the bottom. Now remember, one of these has to be negative. I'll say that the 1 is the negative and the 15 is the positive. Alright, now let's go across the box multiplying. That's a positive 15x and going across this way, we get a negative 1, uh, excuse me, 4x. Now when we combine these together, that's where we need to have the middle term. 15x minus 4x is 11x. 11x. And that is not our middle term. So that tells me that I did not do the work correctly. I've got to either erase this or create another box. And you can do that. You can either erase the work that we just did. We will leave the 4x there. 
Okay, let's try. Now remember, we didn't want to put the 15 in this box, and I tried the 15 at the top. So it looks like neither one of those are going to work with the 4 and the X. So let's go down here and try now the 3 and the negative 5. Now it will make a difference as to where I put it. Shall we put the 3 in the bottom or the 3 in the top? Here we go across. A negative 3 times X is a negative 3X. 4 times 5 is a plus 20X. Well, again, this is not going to give us the middle term of a negative 4X. So again, I've got to erase it, or you can draw another box. Now, I had the 3 at the top that time. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put the 3 at the bottom. Now, I know this is taking a little while. I've really tried to miss the problem a little bit so that you see that sometimes it, there's lots of choices and you just have to try them. As long as you know your multiplication tables, you'll be able to do these quickly and you'll get really get quite good at guessing them. Alright, going across we have a negative 5x and going across this way we have a positive 12x and I'm afraid that still didn't work. So it appears that none of the four choices work with the 4x times x. So this box appears to be not the one we need to use. So let's go back over here. Remember we had a choice of 2x times 2x for our first, time, first term. Excuse me. So we can use 2x times 2x. Now again, we still have the four choices for the last term. But we still know we do have to use one positive and one negative for the signs. I'm going to choose the 3 and the 5. I don't think the 1 and the 15 will work. Let's try the 3 and the 5, and I'm going to try to get it the first time. I'm going to put the uh, 5 here, the 3 here. I'm going to make the 5 negative. All right, let's go across. That will give us a positive 6x. If I go across this way, I get a negative 10x. A plus 6x and a minus 10x is, yes, it is right, negative 4x. Our middle term is a negative 4x, so this is the correct box. All right. Let me clean this up a little bit so I can come back and now write my answer. Where is the answer? Well, remember that these are supposed to factor into two binomials. The first binomial is right there in our box. Now that was a plus 3. I forgot to write the plus. 2x plus 3. We really shouldn't leave out any of the signs. And then the second binomial is right here. 2x minus 5. Now these problems of course can be checked. If you remember we used FOIL or some people call it FOIL. Everyone doesn't. This is two binomials. If you'll multiply these together and add the like terms you should get the trinomial that we started out with. These trinomials are special and they also have another name. They are called quadratic, quadratic trinomials. We will study these quite a bit all through Algebra 2 and even pre-calculus. Well, I hope that helps you get started on knowing how to factor trinomials. Trinomials that are special because they have an x squared term, an x term, and a number term. There are some other quadratics that we will study that still have the three terms, but they are changed just a little bit by adding another variable. There will be two variables sometimes in the problems. But you can still use the box. So copy this box and try to remember to use it any time that you have a quadratic trinomial.